we can see on our planet 17 very strange features which can now be systematically explained as a result of a cataclysmic global flood whose waters erupted from subterranean chambers with an energy release exceeding the explosion of 10 billion hydrogen bombs. This explanation shows us just how rapidly major mountains formed. It explains the coal and oil deposits, the rapid continental drift, why on the ocean floor there are huge trenches and hundreds of canyons and volcanoes. It explains the formation of the layered strata and most of the fossils, the frozen mammoths, the so-called ice ages, and major land canyons, especially the Grand Canyon. The pre-flood Earth probably had only one very large supercontinent covered with lush vegetation. There were seas and major rivers. The mountains were smaller than today's, but perhaps 9,000 feet high. According to the hydroplate theory, the pre-flood Earth had a lot of subterranean water, about half of what is now in our oceans. This water was contained in interconnected chambers, forming a thin spherical shell, about half a mile thick, perhaps 10 miles below the Earth's surface. Increasing pressure in the subterranean water stretched the crust, just as a balloon stretches when the, the pressure inside increases. Failure in the crust began with a microscopic crack which grew in both directions at about three miles per second. The crack following the path of least resistance encircled the globe in about two hours. As the crack raced around the earth, the overlying rock crust opened up like a rip in a tightly stretched cloth. The subterranean water was under extreme pressure because of the weight of the 10 miles of rock pressing down on it. So the water exploded violently out of the rupture. All along this globe encircling rupture, fountains of water jetted supersonically almost 20 miles into the atmosphere. The spray from this enormous fountain produced torrential rains, such as the Earth has never experienced before or after. The Bible states that all the fountains of the great deep burst open on one day. And it describes these events about 5,000 years ago, which we can now tie together scientifically. Some of the water jetting high above the cold stratosphere froze into supercooled ice crystals and produced some massive ice dumps, burying, suffocating, and instantly freezing many animals, including the frozen mammoths of Siberia and Alaska. The high pressure fountains eroded the rock on both sides of the crack, producing huge volumes of sediments that settled out of this muddy water all over the earth. These sediments trapped and buried plants and animals, forming the fossil record. This erosion widened the rupture Eventually, the width was so great that the compressed rock beneath the subterranean chamber sprung upward, giving birth to the mid-oceanic ridge that wraps around the Earth like the seam of a baseball. The continental plates, the hydroplates, still with lubricating water beneath them, slid downhill away from the rising mid-Atlantic ridge. After the massive, slowly accelerating continental plates reached speeds of about 45 miles per hour, they ran into resistances, compressed and buckled. The portions of the hydroplate that buckled down formed ocean trenches. Those that buckled upward formed mountains. This is why the major mountain chains are parallel to the oceanic ridges from which they slid. The hydroplates in sliding away from the oceanic ridges opened up very deep ocean basins into which the floodwaters retreated. On the continents, each bowl-shaped depression or basin was naturally left brimful of water, producing many post-flood lakes. The demonstrations you have just witnessed of a massive worldwide catastrophe in antiquity supports the biblical story of the deluge in every detail. 